Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups, My Breeder Supply. I don't have a pen, I'll go grab that real quick. So, question and answer session. Um, how many times should, should I AI my dog? Well, you know, um, now you would think the right answer is just keep AIing as many times as you can and all's, all's good. Wrong answer. And the reason for that's the wrong answer is, is that if a dog's not being pulled from for a week, the stud, then the sperm that has been depleted more than a week ago is being completely replenished. That dog has, I would call that a full load. Um, if you pull from your dog three times in a row, then you're probably gonna find, and it depends on the age of the dog and the size of his testes, but you're gonna find the third collection will not be as good as the first collection. So I think that, that uh, for me personally, uh, when I'm shipping semen to people, I like to do two AIs Two days apart. That's what I like to do. When I'm doing an AI on my premises, then I typically do three AIs, two days apart from each one. So why is that useful? Because a single AI gets the job done, but it's all about getting the timing right. You never quite know. You know, we go off progesterone levels if you're doing it right, but progesterone levels are not they're just an inference of when the dog is ready and they're not necessarily exactly right. So I like to do an AI probably on day 11 and day 13 on a typical dog with the progesterone level starting with a progesterone level of something around an eight and finishing up with a progesterone level of something around a 20. That gives you a really good coverage over basically you've got a pretty good window of opportunity. If you do three AIs, then I would do an AI on day 10, day 12, and day 14. And so you're doing your first AI probably on a progesterone level of maybe six or seven, and you're finishing up with a progesterone level of probably 22. You've got a really, really, I should have put this in red like the other one, 22. You've got a really good window there. So um, both of those techniques are fine. So three AIs is fine, but don't just AI back to back every day. That's probably not of much benefit. AI two days apart. Remember that semen that you're putting in today is viable inside the, the, uh, the female for at least a day before or after the right time. So you've got, you know, you can spread this thing out by AI every two days. Okay. okay. Uh, I bred my dog and now my dog appears to have an infection. Yes. So this is, uh, this can be a problem. So this is, uh, we're talking about pyometria. So there's two things that can go on. You've just in AI the dog. Make sure that you've got a clean, fresh, sterile AI rod and syringe. The collection cup needs to be fresh. I throw all my stuff away. I don't reuse any of this stuff, and I recommend that you don't too, because this stuff's cheap. You don't want to get bacteria into the dog because that can cause a problem, either vaginitis, which is inflammation of the vaginal wall, or worse yet, pyometria. So the problem gets to be is, is that you've got, <clears throat> here's the vaginal tract. This is the, this is the dog, here's the dog's tail, All right. This is the vaginal tract. And uh, there's a blind alley. This goes up into the uterus. And then there's a couple of ovary ducts that play the ovary. So this is, this is kind of a closed off area here, this thing called the Oz. Well, the semen swims up through here and gets into this. This is where the pregnancy is going on. If some bacteria gets up in there as well, the bacteria can't get out, and this can then be pyometria, means pus filled in Latin. This then gets to be a nasty infection, and these things can swell up and get filled with pus, and I mean, you may have to spay the dog, you certainly would want to put the dog on antibiotics. So how do you know if this is going on? Well, if your dog is acting very abnormal, doesn't, doesn't want to do anything but lay around, uh, acts completely listless, and specifically has a temperature that is 101.6 or higher, this is definitely time to go to the vet and get some professional help because it's very likely you need to get some antibiotics on board to fix this before it gets to be a huge mess. I talked about a video about how to cool dogs down by using alcohol. Um, so this is rubbing alcohol. What we were talking about here is if you're out and about, you should carry a bottle of alcohol in your car, you're out at the park. If your dog gets hot, you can splash alcohol, rubbing alcohol, 
Um, well, you could use vodka, but if you're driving around with vodka in your car, I, I, I question, your, I question your, uh, your motives a little bit, and the police will too. But a bottle of rubbing alcohol will not get you in trouble. So take some rubbing alcohol and splash that over the dog. Why does it work? Well, why do we sweat? And the answer is, is that when we sweat, we produce moisture on our body, and that moisture then evaporates. And it's the evaporation that requires energy to make it happen. So when you sweat, your body is basically having to uh, evaporate. The, uh, the evaporation causes a loss of heat. That's what evaporation is about. So anytime anything's evaporating, there's heat that's going out from that body at the same time. That's why, you know, if you get into a swimming pool and you get out of the swimming pool, you're fine in the swimming pool. The moment you get out, you're shivering, you're cold. It's the evaporation going on. It's cooling your body down. Alcohol evaporates faster than water, and for that reason, it does a better job than water does. So that's the reason. You could just use a garden hose, absolutely fine. Soak your hot dog down with a garden hose, and that will bring that temperature down. But when you're out and about in the park, or in your car, you probably don't have a garden hose or a bucket of water, but you could have one of those quart bottles of alcohol, and that would work very well. Separated my blood to do a, a progesterone test, but I mixed it up. Can I separate it again? Yes. So what we're talking about here is, is you collect blood and you put it into a container. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to separate the red blood cells from the plasma. And if you let that blood sit for long enough, it will separate out all by itself. And this is the part we want to use for the test. Whether it be a relaxing pregnancy test or a progesterone test, we're using the plasma. This is the part that we're using. And we don't want the red blood cells. So that's the part we don't want. So what happens is this can get stirred up and mucked up again. Just let it sit again and it'll all separate out. There's no, nothing magic going on here. It's just a separation of two different, basically two different materials inside the same container. Just let it sit. And one thing you can do, by the way, if you're in a hurry to get this done, because a centrifuge will do it literally minutes, standing on the counter might take hours, you can take a vial and tie it to the blade of one of your ceiling fans and spin on a ceiling fan for about half an hour an hour and that will separate it too. Does everybody AI? Well, no, they don't. Um, in the French Bulldog world, I think the majority of people probably do. And the reason for that is that French Bulldogs have a very hard time because of their physical stru structure. Getting, an a, getting a natural tie done with a French Bulldog is difficult. I don't do natural ties ever because it introduces sexually transmitted diseases like brucellosis, canine herpes virus, um, kennel cough, uh, distemper. All of these things can be completely removed from the equation if the one dog is over here and the other dog is over here and I manually collect from the dog and artificially inseminate the dog over here. It completely gets that out of the picture. And the other thing is I've got control of the process and the problem with Frenchies is, is that the stud dog typically just wear themselves out trying to get a tie done and they can get exhausted if it's hot outside and they can actually squirt the semen out onto the ground and then you've missed your opportunity to AI that day. So, in the French Bulldog world, me personally, I always AI. Somebody's asking, last question here. Somebody's asking, should they get our incubator or our whelping system? Well, of course, you know what the answer is, you get them both. We give a flat $10 shipping on anything you order. If you order both, to ship an incubator costs me about 30 to 40 bucks, but we just charge you 10 bucks because we, want, we don't want to frighten you off with stupid shipping costs. Um, so which should you buy and why? Well, so if you're gonna have very many dogs, very many litters, an incubator is absolutely a lifesaver, um, and um, you'll be glad that you had one. You will run into a situation where, well, first thing is for me, I go off to Texas about an hour away to have a C-section done. My C-section cost drops from thousand to twelve hundred bucks down to two hundred and fifty to three hundred bucks so it's a huge savings just by driving an hour and my portable incubator lets me get puppies back home in a completely safe manner i leave that incubator plugged in and fired up for the next three weeks because i might have a weak small or sick puppy and those puppies do so much better in a controlled environment in an incubator so will you have that hopefully not if you have enough puppies will you have it yes you will and if you have the incubator, you have a fighting chance of saving that puppy. And without it, it's going to be rough on you. So, 
Is it worth spending 295 bucks for an incubator? Well, we think so. I always, whenever I've got puppies around, I've always got my incubator fired up and ready to go. But I've even got one here right in front of me. So I've got two different sizes, and this thing is an absolute lifesaver, and it'll save you money if you're gonna to have to go travel to your vet for a C-section. So yes, you should have one of these. However, the less expensive heating system, which is $199, you should get that, period. You should go buy that. If you don't like it, send it back, we'll give you money back. You should get that because that will make for a happy mum, happy babies, safe babies that you can leave with mum 24 seven and you don't have to be the mother and you shouldn't be the mother because you've got a Frenchie or another uh, female dog that wants to be a mother and wants to be with her babies and she does not like it when you take the babies away. And this system, fixes that problem for you. It lets you not have to worry about what's going on. They are in San Francisco. You can go to My Breeder Supply and see more information and videos on these products. My Breeder Supply. Should have it up on a, on a thing here. You should go look at our products. And, and there's videos that tell you why this thing is, why this heated system is so wonderful. But I, 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 I talked about it before, I'm just gonna very briefly talk about about why this thing is so good. Um, nobody else has it, it's patented, well, patent pending by us. So this is something that we've invented and been developing for the last seven or eight years. Um, all right, so what you have is you have the floor of your crate or whelping box. You can come up with any box you want, we'll custom build it for you. If you've got some odd size, not a problem. We give you, we manufacture heating tape that goes around the periphery underneath this floor. So there's a little heated tape. And it has a thermostat to set that temperature, typically to about 100 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's a nice hot zone right around the periphery. Puppies love this hot zone. Mums don't want any extra heat. They hate that heating pad and that lamp you've been using. They hate it. They say, don't do that. Mum's in the middle, she's happy as a clam. She wants to be in there with the babies, that's where she should be. The babies are nursing on mum, they're happy. The babies stop nursing on mum, they start moving around in, a, in an attempt to find something warm. They find this heated place here and they just flat fall asleep right on top of this. They just sit right on top of this. So the last part of the equation is, is that we then provide a, I uh, need another color pen, we then provide a pig rail system that it easily installs inside this so we then have a rail that's above the heated area with a space underneath it. So there's a rail here. It's called a pig rail. And so there's an area above the heated area. And the puppies will get in between that space. So if you look on the side view, here's the floor. I better use a color that's representative of what we're doing here. Here's the floor. And remember the heat, the heat is coming up through this floor. So here's the heat underneath the floor. So the heat's coming up through the floor. Nice hot area. And then there's a rail above this. So I'm doing the wrong color. There's a rail above this. So the puppies are now in this area, heated area, below the rail and are on the floor that's heated. So if mum backs up against the wall, she hits the rail, not the puppy doesn't squish them up against the wall. It's really a great system. It really works so well. And you can leave your babies with, in that environment for the first three weeks and you don't have to do hardly a darn thing. In fact, they, your mum will not want to leave this. You'll have to drag her out sometimes to go outside and pee and potty. I leave a bowl in here with some water and some food. Of course, I check on my babies every three, four, five hours, especially more during the first day and less as time goes on. But I always find that they're either nursing or they're only the pig rail. It just works so wonderfully well. And anything else you're doing, in my opinion, it's just absolutely not the way to do it. So look at that. Um, it's wonderful. It really works well. And I wouldn't be talking about it if it didn't. So thanks for watching our videos. If you like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to us. If you think there's some other things we should be talking about, let us know. Uh, if there's some things that we've missed, of course, let us know about that. Thank you for watching. The most important thing is be nice to your doggies. Bye, everybody.